Here we have an electron that is moving through a uniform magnetic field. And the question gives us the X component of the electron's velocity, and then it also gives us the Y component of the electron's velocity. Please note that when it says I hat, that does refer to the X component, and then the J hat refers to the Y component. And then similarly for the magnetic field, they give us the X component of the magnetic field and then the Y component. And we are asked to determine the force on the electron due to this magnetic field. Now we've learned in this chapter that to calculate the magnetic force on a charged particle that is moving through a magnetic field with a particular velocity, we have to use the following equation. We can see that we take the charge and then multiply that by a cross product. We have to do a cross product between the velocity of the charged particle and the magnetic field in which the charged particle is moving. So the most challenging aspect of this question perhaps is to determine the cross product. A lot of confusion surrounds how to do a cross product, so we're going to be doing that in this video. So what I have done down below is I've taken this equation and I have rewritten it. So here we have the charge, Q, multiplied by what will become a cross product. Now, a cross product is often written in this notation right here. Do not be intimidated by that. What we have here are I, J, and K hat. These represent, again, the X, Y, and Z directions. And since we're doing a cross product between velocity and magnetic field, what we've done is we have filled in the various components. So we have the X component for velocity, its Y component, and its Z component, and then the corresponding components for the magnetic field as well. So in fact, it's going to be helpful to rewrite our cross product setup by entering in the values for the X, Y, Z components for velocity and magnetic field. So it will look like the following. We'll take the charge on an electron, and then we'll multiply by this cross product. Along the top, we'll put in the I hat, J hat, and K hat, which are the X, Y, Z directions. Now, for the velocity in the X direction, we can see from the setup that that has a value of two times 10 to the sixth meters per second. So we'll just fill that in right here. Two times 10 to the sixth meters per second. Why don't we slide these over a little bit? And then for the Y, component of the velocity, that was given as 3 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. There is no z component for the velocity, so we can just put a zero right there. Now, onto the magnetic field components, it has an x component of 0 0.03 tesla. It has a y component, now be careful here the way this is written, it's negative 0.15 tesla. And then there is no z component for the magnetic field, so we'll put a zero right there for the k hat direction. We'll close off this notation for the cross product, and then we will begin to actually compute it. So we've created a little cross product template down below here. Now in this template, it is very important to note that we have left a space for the x component, the y component, and then the z component, and that we've put a minus sign between x and y and a plus sign between y and z. That is very important. You'll always have this little minus and plus sign here when you do your cross products. So for the charge Q, we recall that that's the charge on an electron. In fact, we might want to just plug that value in right now if we have some room here. The charge on an electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So we'll squeeze that in right here. And now we actually get to perform the cross product. My goodness, I'm having a hard time writing a nine for some reason. There we go, coulombs. Now, to do the cross product, here's what I like to do. When you're doing the I hat value or the X direction, what you should do is actually cover up the I hat column in your setup. So we're gonna cover that up and then we'll cover it up over here as well. So you'll always cover up basically the direction that you're trying to calculate, a little bit counterintuitive perhaps. But what's left over is this J hat, K hat. And what you do is simply what we call a determinant. So what you do for a determinant is you multiply diagonally this way. So you're gonna have three times 10 to the sixth times zero. Now, of course, that's zero. So we'll put a zero right there. And then you'll multiply diagonally this way. In that case, you'll have zero times negative 0.15, which is also zero. And then between those two results, you put a little subtraction sign. So here, zero minus zero, of course, is just zero, 
So that means that overall in this i hat direction, we're just going to have a zero right here. And that completes the computation for i hat. Now, for the j hat, we're going to uncover without mangling everything. And then for j hat, you're going to cover up that column of your cross product. So we'll cover that up like so. And then we'll end up doing this determinant. So with what's left is i hat and k hat. You'll multiply diagonally this way. So 2 times 10 to the 6th once uh, multiplied by 0 is once again 0. And then if you multiply diagonally this way, you'll have 0.03 times 0, which again is 0. And then you subtract those two results. 0 minus 0 is 0. So this is a little bit of an easy calculation. That becomes 0 right there. Finally, things get interesting here when we calculate the z component or the k hat direction. And since we're doing k hat, we'll cover up k hat like this and then we'll do a determinant. So here we actually have to multiply the 2 times 10 to the 6th by negative 0.15. So let's pick up our calculators. Let's do 2 times 10 to the 6th times negative 0.15 and you're going to get negative 300,000 and then you're going to multiply it diagonally this way. So you'll do 0 0.03 times 3 times 10 to the 6th and you will get 90,000 and then between these two values, you're going to put a subtraction sign. You always subtract when you do that determinant. So if you subtract these two values, of course, you're going to end up with negative 390,000. So let's just come down here below and rewrite what we've got going here. We've got the magnetic force on the electron equals negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs times. Now, because i hat and j hat are both zero, we can basically just disregard them. And then the only thing that's left is k hat. And again, this came out to negative 390,000. And technically, we multiplied a meters per second by a Tesla. So I suppose we can write this as meters per second Tesla. But then basically, you're just going to, oh, wait, I forgot one thing. This is in the k hat direction. Excuse me. So don't forget to put k hat here. And then finally, you can multiply these two numbers together. And when you do multiply those two numbers together, you're going to get a magnetic force equal to 6.24 times 10 to the negative 14th. This will be Newtons, of course, because it's a force, and this will be k hat. So the question for part A wanted the force on the electron due to the magnetic field. So this would be the correct answer. And if your homework system wants you to separate it into like a magnitude and a direction, then the magnitude would be 6.24 times 10 to the minus 14th newtons. The direction, because we are left with just k hat, that would be pointing in the z direction, and it's in the positive z direction. It's positive because our answer came out positive. So that would be the answer for part A. Let's take a look at part B. We'll expedite the process here. We have to repeat the calculation, except now it's a proton with the same velocity. So because it's a proton, we have the exact same calculation. The only thing that's going to change is the charge. So rather than this being a negative 1.6 times 10 to the minus 16, it'll be a positive. So without setting it up in too much of an elaborate form, we'll just say for part B, the force on a proton would be positive 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs multiplied by the same cross product as before. Obviously, then when we work this out, we're going to get a magnetic force equal to negative 6.24 times 10 to the minus 14th newtons. And this will be in the k hat direction, aka z direction. So that would be the answer. Again, if your homework system wants a magnitude, well, remember magnitude, you just take the absolute value of the force. So that would be 6.24 times 10 to the minus 14th newtons. And then the direction be careful here, it is k hat, so it's still in the z direction, but we calculated a negative force, so it would actually be pointing in the negative z direction.